let's discuss that awesome goal by Chucky Lozano. So the parabolic flight from when Hector Herrera kicks the ball. He, Hector Herrera, by the way, is number 16. When he kicks the ball and you just see that he just pounds it into the sky, right? And the ball basically travels all the way across the field. Uh, we can extract a lot of information from that. And from that, we're going to create parametric equations. So some of the information that we can extract, and you can uh, view the video, and some of these are, are estimates, but these can actually be measured exactly. A, a soccer field, for example, is 120 meter, meters long. Hector Herrera is going to uh, basically kicks this ball from outside of the 18-yard 18, 18 box all the way to the other end of the field at an almost identical spot. So you could measure that he kicks it from a distance of 20 meters away from his goal to another distance of 20 meters away from Russia's goal. Uh, and then basically from that, we can say, we, we could even check the video with a, with a stopwatch and see that the ball was actually in flight for 3.6 seconds. All of, the, all of this we can uh, basically estimate from the video. The next thing that we need to discuss is what is a parametric equation? So a parametric equation is an equation that basically has two components, and that is a horizontal component and a vertical component. So in this first video, I'm not going to get into any calculations. I'm just going to uh, very quickly talk about what horizontal and vertical components mean in physics. So if an object is flying in the air, right, much like this parabola, if an object is flying in the air, then basically what is happening is this object, you, you see it travel as a parabola. If you were to think separately, though, of how, how quickly that object is traveling from left to right, I don't know if that's correct with the camera, but if you would see how that object is traveling from left to right, and uh, if you would maybe take a look at its speed, well, an object, even if it's traveling as a parabola, is going to travel at a constant speed horizontally because there is no force and other than, let's say, air resistance, uh, you know, anything like that. But there is really no force uh, that slows uh, an object down horizontally speaking. So the initial horizontal velocity is practically the same as the terminal uh, horizontal velocity. Vertically speaking, this is a little bit different, all right? Vertically speaking, Hector Herrera, you know, kicks the ball very hard from about one meter off the ground. The ball shoots up into the air, right? But just like any object, when an object is, is flying up in the air, it might very quickly, might very quickly go up and then it sort of reaches, it kind of slows down. That's what some people call hang time. Hang time doesn't really exist, but it reaches a peak. And then it starts, starts to come back down slowly and then quicker and quicker and quicker. And all of that's due to gravity, right? Uh, so that is the way that, uh, that vertical velocity works, different from horizontal velocity. So um, to be more mathematical about it, horizontal velocity is going to be linear or constant. Vertical velocity is going to be quadratic, all right? Um, you've probably already seen problems where it's like the height of the object depends on this quadratic function. You've probably seen that in the past. Well, we're going to take a look at this in a slightly different light with parametric equation. So I don't know if this whole time you've been asking yourself, well, what exactly does a parametric equation look like? So let's just let's just discuss the format. A parametric equation is going to have really a set of equations. You got an x equals because we discussed there is a horizontal component and there is a vertical component. All right. So your x equals, well, you're going to have some equation depending on the variable t. So for example, you might have, a, if it's a linear horizontal equation, you might have something like m, we're not going to say x and we're not going to say mx plus b, let's say mt plus b, because the function is going to depend on the parameter t. The equation y could be linear as well. In this case, it's going to be quadratic. So we're going to say a, and instead of saying x squared, we're going to say t squared plus b t plus c. All right. So you'll notice what they have in common is that both depend on the parameter t. In this case, and in almost every case, that parameter t represents time.